Finally tonight, the scene is the White House Christmas party, and the movie is The American President. What this reminded me of, in reality, is not this bad, but it's close. Mr. President, militant women are out to destroy college football in this country. Is that a fact? Yeah. Yes, sir. Have you been following the situation down in Atlanta? No. Uh, these women want parity for girls' softball, volleyball, field hockey. Well, if I'm not mistaken, Gil, the courts ruled on Title IX about 20 years ago. Uh, yes, sir, but what I'm saying now is that these women want that law enforced. It's a world gone mad, Gil. Well, tonight, according to the right-wing paranoia sphere, militant Democrats are out to destroy Republican car dealerships in this country. It's tonight's WTF moment. It's true. The Washington Examiner, which is like the Washington Times, only with fewer moonies, has breathlessly reported that, quote, evidence appears to be mounting that the Obama administration has systematically targeted for closing Chrysler dealers who contributed to Republicans. What started earlier this week as mainly a rumbling on the right side of the blogosphere has gathered some steam today with revelations that among the dealers being shut down are a GOP congressman and closing of competitors to a dealership chain partly owned by former Clinton White House Chief of Staff Mac McClarty. Ooh, this gets better and better. Obama's car czar, Stephen Ratner, is married to the former national finance chairwoman of the Democratic National Committee. And what's worse, he used to be a reporter for the New York Times as recently as 1982. 1982? The chip implanted in his brain to make him act all liberal and anti-American must still be running on its original battery, 1982. He worked for the New York Times when Reagan was president. Of course he's leading a Democratic plot to destroy Republican car dealers. Then there's the real victim here. Florida Representative Vern Buchanan learned from a House colleague that his Venice, Florida dealership is on the hit list. Buchanan also has a Nissan franchise paired with the Chrysler facility in Venice. It's an outrage. It's not about me. I'm going to be fine, said Buchanan, the dealership's majority owner. You're talking you're taking over 100,000 jobs. We're supposed to be in the business of creating jobs, not killing jobs. Before we get back to the vast right turn on red conspiracy to wreak revenge on the Republicans by closing their car dealerships, an important note about the GOP stance on this auto bailout that is keeping three quarters of all Chrysler dealerships open. They all voted against it! Last December, before Obama became president, the Republicans from McCain to Bunning, from Bachman to Cantor, preferred seeing the whole industry go under. All the jobs, not just the 100,000 Congressman Buchanan just mentioned, all the car dealerships, Republican, Democrat, Socialist, Communist, used. 31 Republican senators voted against the auto bailout, 150 Republican congressmen, including... In the height of chutzpah, considering how he's now alleging a political conspiracy to close his car dealership, Congressman Vern Buchanan of Florida, he voted against the auto bailout. If he'd had it his way, it wouldn't have been his Chrysler dealership being closed. It would have been everybody's Chrysler dealership being closed. All of them. Chowderhead. Well, this has been fun, this specter of Republicans who insisted we should let Detroit dry up and blow away, and with it all the parts manufacturers and all the repair shops and all the dealerships, Chrysler, Ford, GM, the people who told an entire industry and all its satellite industries to go to hell, suddenly these hypocrites are getting all riled up because only about one quarter of just the Chrysler dealerships are being closed. But this misses the basic issue. The basic issue raised here is this, concludes the Washington Examiner guy. How do we account for the fact millions of dollars were contributed to GOP candidates by Chrysler who are being closed by the government? But only one has been found so far that is being closed that contributed to the Obama campaign in 2008. Dun, 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 dun. Of course, actual journalists would try to answer that question before posting their rage-inducing, conspiracy theory-feeding, paranoia-producing twaddle in a semi-newspaper and not afterwards. Then again, journalism for these guys is sticking your byline on the top and then writing down what Mr. Bouncy Bouncy says. Nobody can figure out exactly why certain dealerships are being targeted to be closed. There are some people looking into it, but the evidence is sketchy. All we know is that a whole lot of really successful dealerships are being shut down. Some of them happen to be owned by people who contributed lots of money to Republicans. And oh yeah, about the really successful car dealerships that aren't being shut down, turns out some of them happen to be owned by people who contributed lots of money to Republicans too. Well, I'm not being honest when I say that. Nearly all of them, nearly all of the really successful Chrysler dealerships that aren't being shut down happen to be owned by people who contributed lots of money to Republicans because nearly all car dealers who donate money to either party donate it to the Republicans. 
Who else but Nate Silver did the math here? He used Huffington Post's wonderful search engine, Fundrace, and pulled down Auto Dealer from the occupation menu. Results? Donations by auto dealers to the GOP total over eight and a half times more than donations by auto dealers to the Democrats. 8.6 to 1. Now, if you list yourself as a, quote, car dealer, it's a little closer. Maybe that includes used car dealers. I don't know. Donations to the GOP are only triple the donations to the Democrats there. The other variations that Nate found, automobile dealer, they give 10 times as much to Republicans as Democrats. Automotive dealer, I'm guessing those are the ones who sell the Stanley Steamers and the Hupmobiles and fleets of Cadillacs. That's about a 16 to 1 Republican edge. Put them all together, as Nate did, and as he writes, 88% of the contributions from car dealers went to Republican candidates and just 12% to Democratic candidates. Another reality-based analyst using a different data source puts the number at 92%. The gist of this is inescapable. The reason it was nearly impossible to find a Chrysler dealership that gave to the Democrats and was just ordered closed is not that there aren't any that were ordered closed. It's that there aren't any, period. In their haste to scapegoat Obama for anything and everything, Limbaugh and his wimp followers neglected to look at the larger picture. This evil, Democrat, socialist, racist, bomb-throwing White Sox fan has secretly enacted a plan that makes sure that nearly eight out of every ten Chrysler dealers who donated to the Republicans are forced to keep their property, to stay in business, to stay open and continue to make money. The bastard. A conspiracy to eliminate Republican automobile dealers. WTF!